Hi, Mark. This is uh, Bill Ayers with Real Film News. Uh, thanks for uh, letting me uh, have the time to talk with you. Of course. My pleasure. Um, I guess my, I wanted to start off with my first question being, um, what, uh, what about the subject of ventriloquism uh, really interested you and uh, wanted, uh, or interested you enough to make a documentary about it? Well, it's funny. I just come off of the West Wing and uh, Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip, and uh, I was getting married. And at my wedding, uh, my stepmom, or sorry, my mother-in-law was asked to deliver a toast. And so uh, she comes up to the microphone. This is in front of about 150 or so people. And um, she's very shy. And instead of uh, delivering a toast as you would expect, um, she raised her hand and started to give this incredibly charming and funny and witty <laughs> and endearing toast with, without moving her lips and with her hand talking. Wow. Um, and it, she had this uh, white glove on and it, it was essentially like it became a sock puppet. And it was so entertaining and unusual <laughs> <laughs> um, that in addition to wondering, you know, what kind of family have I married into, I had to ask her more about ventriloquism. And uh, it turns out she's a second grade school teacher and she does this with her kids in her class to keep them entertained. But she's found that it's really been a great outlet for her to express all kinds of different personalities and, you know, think, and say things that she wouldn't normally feel comfortable saying. So she told us about this convention in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, where some 500 ventriloquists gather every year and swap stories and walk around uh, talking to uh, each other with their dummies. And we thought this is straight out of a Christopher <laughs> Guest film. We, we have to go see it for ourselves. And um, my wife and I uh, took a crew and, and went down there and just fell in love with the community and the people. And we knew instantly that this was a, a film project we, we had to make. Great. Um, I know that uh, the film uh, featured uh, kind of uh, the uh, ventriloquist Terry, Terry Fatour, Dan Horn, Kim Yeager, Wilma Swartz, and Dylan Burdett. Um, Probably one of the hardest uh, uh, of the individuals to watch was Wilma, considering she struggled uh, so financially. I'm wondering if you have, um, you know, followed up with her to see if maybe she's been uh, more successful, been able to turn things around. Yeah, in fact, uh, we're having a, a big uh, Hollywood premiere party tonight, and um, she will be there. Uh, she's moved to Arizona with her show. Uh, and we heard that uh, after nearly 30 years, her son has gotten in touch with her, oh, wow. and um, things have really turned around for her. And a lot of that is, is due to the support uh, of the whole, you know, ventriloquist community. They they really they they act and and work like a family, and that's one of the things that we found so kind of uh, charming and inspiring about um, about this community. What uh, what about uh, uh, Dylan? I mean, considering he was only thirteen years old, I mean that's pretty young. And but he seemed very determined. I'm wondering, um, have you heard about him? Has he uh, um, been more successful as well, or uh, yeah, con convinced you know, his father even maybe? So. <laughs> we you never know, you know because this is a documentary; it's real life. And and we were curious four years later after we started filming in 2007. We've been following these people for a long time. Wow. You know, would they still be interested, and what would their lives be like uh, this much later? And Dylan is uh, as much uh, as an avid ventriloquist as he was back then. He still hopes to become a professional. Um, he performs a lot more. He still uses Reggie, uh, yeah. which is the the same um, puppet that's in in the film. And uh, it's it's really amazing how how determined he is. Um, Great. Um, you talked about uh, you. Uh, you and your wife went down to the convention. I'm wondering um, how much, how involved was your wife in the making of the film? She's the producer. Mm -hmm. This is our first joint project together, and uh, we're still married. So, uh, so <laughs> no matter what the <laughs> outcome, we feel like it was successful. Um, but uh, it was much harder for me to pull the director card on her. <laughs> um, she, yeah, no, we, we were uh, very involved. I, I uh, wrote and directed it, and she produced it. Was it, uh, was it primarily your idea, or did she have some input on the, uh, the idea as well, or um, kind of push you in the direction of making the film? 
Well, since it was inspired by her mom, mm-hmm. uh, we, you know, we, we both, we treated the subject matter with a certain amount of reverence and respect. Um, and we always, we wanted to capture a certain tone that we, we both really agreed early on. We wanted it to be funny and inspiring and uh, quirky, but never sort of crossing the line into, um, uh, you know, completely making fun of, of the world because we did find it so charming. So that was something we, we both agreed on the tone early on, and that made making the film much easier. Um, the thing we never knew going in was what stories we would end up telling. Hmm. We actually thought that uh, her mom was going to be one of the subjects, and then once we really uh, dive, dove in, uh, we realized how much family was a part of the film and how much, you know, emphasis we were going to do put on uh, including the family members uh, of the ventriloquist. Um, and that's really where we got so much of the fun and richness of the film. But uh, that also resulted in um, Lindsay's mom being on the cutting room floor mm. because uh, <laughs> neither of us really thought it was appropriate for us to be in the film. Well, maybe in one of the deleted scenes on the Blu-ray or DVD. <laughs> That's right. We have some great bonus material. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Um, uh, I guess another question I would have is, um, you know, watching the film, I, I felt as though, you know, it, it definitely the, the art of ventriloquism, and I, in my review I call it more of an art form than anything else. It's also a performance, yeah. but it is an art form. Um, it allows the individual to kind of, um, I don't know, um, be somebody that they're not, or maybe let a part of them out uh, that they wouldn't normally do so, you know, kind of like, a, you know, a ch- uh, the person making the toast and everything. Did you find that maybe a lot of people might be pretty shy, in fact, but this allows them to kind of, uh, you know, touch base with everybody? Or Absolutely. We, we found um, very, that many of the ventriloquists uh, create characters that are wholly unlike who they, you know, normally are um, without them. And that's part of, I think, the fun of it, um, both for them and for audiences. Uh, it's really an incredible art form when you, when you think about, um, not only is it a stand-up comedy routine that somebody has to go up on stage and perform, but then the, the puppets are an instrument. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, we, we turn, uh, you know, uh, inside out one of, one of the dummies early on, so you can see uh, all of the keys, you know, to control the mouth, the lips, the eyes, the, the you wiggle the ears, um, hand gestures. You're you're having to breathe life into a, a wooden object, um, and at the same time create a, a character for that person that's going to bounce off of you, so that you have this full routine. And then it's got to be funny and entertaining, or or nobody's going to watch. Um, all the while, with your lips closed when you talk, or when you're <laughs> where, your dummy talk. So it's, it's a lot. I mean, I have a lot of respect for people who, who, uh, who do this and so, do it well. So I got to ask, I mean, even I, after the film, tried doing it. Have you been practicing, uh, you know, your ventriloquism? <laughs> or? Um, I, I leave it for the professionals. <laughs> um, we, uh, Dan Horn actually sent us a puppet after he saw the film and um, I, we've tried playing with it a little bit. We have a one-year-old that, that we, um, oh, cool. we <laughs> use to entertain him. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I leave it to the professionals. I would much rather uh, capture it and watch them be entertaining than um, try it myself. Hmm. Well, I know we're almost out of time, but, um, uh, it, you know, each of them pick their own puppets and everything. Um, did you speak with everybody in terms of uh, kind of why, their reason for choosing a particular character or characters? Or? Yeah, it was really fa- fascinating going through e- each of them and the characters that they felt the most comfortable with and, um, and how those personalities evolved. And, you know, I think Dylan is a great example of, of this kid in, in rural Kentucky who, who picks an African-American dummy as kind of an alter ego who he describes as a a pimp and Mm -hmm. a ladies' man and um, very suave. And, um, you know, when you see Dylan and he's very shy, uh, you see how that's a a great counterpoint for him. Um, But all all of them, almost everyone we met, and you know, tried to pick a a, a dummy that had um, a personality apart from themselves that could... um, you know, provoke audiences. And I think a lot of them also feel that if you say something with a 
a puppet, they can say things that are um, uh, much more brash than uh, they can sort of, than they can get away with, mm. and people will laugh because it's coming from a doll. And then also they can be the nice guys and say, "Oh, you know, um, Reggie, you didn't really mean that about somebody." Um, and so they can they can um, apologize <laughs> for their <laughs> alter ego. Well, before we have to hang up, I'll ask you one last question, um, sure. and that would be. Uh, um, since everybody's chosen kind of their characters, uh, you know, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, uh, if you were to pick an alter ego for yourself, um, you know, what what would you choose and why? So. Oh, God, that's a really good question. Um, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is is some kind of uh, like a a wolf or uh, a. a some kind of yeah, probably a, like a, a wolf that I could use with with um, a bark that's much bigger than its bite. Oh, cool! I think that would be a fun character to, to have around with me all day. Do you think that your personality is more you know uh, bark is worse than the uh, the bite or? Uh, no, not mine. That's that's what I'd like <laughs> to have with me. Somebody who can who can yell and scream and and uh, <laughs> and, and I can just be the, be the nice guy. <laughs> well, we ha I hope to see uh, more projects from you in the future, more directorial, uh, um, and then, uh, you know, keep, uh, you know, I, I wish the West Wing was still on, so. Oh, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, this was a blast to make. We really had a lot of fun, and, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to directing again really soon. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. You have a great day. All right, you too. Enjoy your premiere. Thanks. Thanks.